You're watching Championship Week, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. March 12th, 2009, you knew you were watching something special. Bevendorf at the buzzer. Oh! Good! They will check it! They're going to wave it up. Okay, overtime. Here we go. But then it got crazy. The tension on every possession. The last second chances. No! Overtime number four! Unbelievable. Overtime number six! OMG. Wake up your friends. They're still playing. As good as this band. And it was only a quarterfinal. So y'all better be ready, because the quarterfinals are about star making. Was it beauty? Sims on the pass, scores! Overtime. Right on the drive to the bucket. Got it out the window! Ball. And if you think you've seen it all, you haven't. Welcome to the Big East Championship, presented by American Eagle Outfitters, part of Championship Week, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. New York City, the epicenter of the Big East Conference, as Madison Square Garden is hosting this event for the 30th year in a row. But tonight's quarterfinals span the nation, a school from the Midwest. The second-seeded Marquette Golden Eagles, led by Georgia-born Jay Crowder, the Big East Player of the Year, take on a team from the South. The Louisville Cardinals, led in a battle by Seattle native and homecoming King Peyton Siva. It has already been a thrilling day of quarterfinal round action here at the Garden. Earlier today, Syracuse rallied from eight down in the second half to beat Connecticut by three. Cincinnati trailed by 11 in the second half, beat Georgetown by two in double overtime. Tonight, Marquette and Louisville, and then Notre Dame and South Florida. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Big East Championship. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us as we get our first look at this tournament of Marquette. A team that won 25 games this year, Jay, finished second in the league. They've had a terrific year with a great effort. That's really the key for them. Boy, they do have great effort. And in this game against Louisville, they want to get up and down the floor. They want to play fast, but they don't want to be reckless. And defensively, they've got to keep in front of Peyton Siva, keep him out of the lane. They want to defend aggressively, but they can't foul and put Louisville at the line. They had the double bye to tonight's quarterfinals. Louisville had to play last night. They beat Seton Hall. But for the fifth game in a row, Bill, they're struggling to score. Well, the offense, you should know a lot about offense. You're always attacking the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> now, the big thing, the mantra for Rick Pitino is his defense. But to set it up, you've got to ring the bell. They've got to make some deep shots and apply that pressure full. And let's take a look now at tonight's one-on-one -on -one segment. Well, for Louisville, it all starts with the point guard, Peyton Siva. As fast end-to-end -end and as fast with the ball in his hands as any guard in the country. And sometimes he gets going a little bit too fast. If he stays under control, is not thinking, but just reacting and just playing. Peyton Siva is one of the best point guards in the country. Well, you're talking about a cerebral player. We've got one tonight. Jay Crowder has a great understanding of exactly what a coach wants. Beats you in various spots on the floor. Can step out and get a little nylon and a little woo-woo. Here are the starting lineups for Louisville with their victory last night. Now 23 and 9 for the year. Peyton Siva with Chris Smith. Kyle Kurek, their leading scorer, the talented freshman Shane Behannon, and the shot blocking Gorgie Jeng. The lineups are brought to you by American Eagle Outfitters. Junior Cadogan will run the show for Marquette with Darius Johnson Odom, first team All Big East. Vander Blue, the player of the year, Jake Crowder, and Jamil Wilson. Rounding out the top five for Marquette, 25 and six for the season, 14 and four in Big East play. Their best conference record. Both of these schools came into the Big East in the 2005-06 season. They had been matched up together in Conference USA prior to that. And they've had a lot of memorable games over the years. They met earlier this year in Milwaukee, and Marquette was a winner, but Kyle Curick did not play. Marquette had the double bye. Louisville did not. Since they brought this format into play, the teams with a double by eight and six all time, two and zero oh today, with the wins by Syracuse and Cincinnati. Peyton Siva right to the bucket, and we're underway. Nice attack, tough pass. What a play there on the tap back. And yes, this is Louisville in their infrared uniforms tonight. Chris Smith attacked the bucket and got called for an offensive foul. Mike Roberts, Brian O'Connell, and Carl Hess are the officials tonight. 
Louisville looks like a bunch of six, seven traffic cones out there. I'm just thinking, I went across the floor when we were practicing. They st I stopped. Oh. I thought it was one of the guards. One thing, they, they have no excuse for missing open people. <laughs> that is a great point. Louisville refers to these uniforms as their Bill Raftery tribute uniforms matching Bill's eye color when he wakes up on a typical <laughs> Saturday or Sunday morning. Yeah, very nice. Out of the gate strong. <laughs> Good ball movement. They spread the floor, and he can make those. Jay Crowder a miss. Peyton Seba, junior from Seattle. Yeah, really string it out, Sean. He's so good at turning the corner. So nice cut. Looked like the hand and almost traveled in through a wild shot. Oh, Crowder a ahead of Johnson on him. In traffic. What an understanding he has. And a body like mine. He fills that shirt. Well, Peyton Siva took a gamble trying to take that away. Wound up giving up a layup because of it. Darius Johnson Odom's a left-hander, but he likes to dunk the ball right-handed. That time just laid it in. Nobody helping. Jing and right around Jamil Wilson. And a takeaway by Siva that he couldn't score, and Crowder pulled it down. What a nice challenge by Crowder without fouling. A lot of energy out here. And Louisville took it easy. Of course, Marquette well rested. Got here Monday. Same day Sean arrived. She got here Sunday. So eager to get this event started. Good per diem. <laughs> got Johnson a Odom a miss, but Crowder in the right place. Then Bahan and sent it back. Darius Johnson Odom's got a great shot fake, doesn't he? he? He does a lot of nice things. You're right. Nothing there. Kadugan, tough fade away from the top of the key. And it was rebounded by Wilson, but then he threw it away. So they put the pressure on, but the push. Kyle Curick for three. Long rebound. Crowder lost it. And then a nice block by Wilson. Boy, what activity. Three. Siva, the dump down to the baseline, counted and a chance for three for Shane Bahannon. What a find along the baseline by Peyton Siva. When he plays like this, it's another level. Well, he's really engaged. The look on his face just gives strength to his teammates. We're talking to some of the Louisville people, they thought they would be fresh and shoot the ball better. He's always fresh. Solid play. Hannah does a nice job of staying on that baseline, sort of behind the defense. Oh! Mm -hmm. Against Syracuse, remember he did that pretty good against that zone? He missed the free throw. He's 59% from the free throw line for the year. Louisville off to a good start. Off their 61-55 victory over Seton Hall last night. Crowder knocks it down. He just makes great decisions. He's not, it's unbelievable. He's not going to get involved. So the big guy looming, stick it from there. He's got everything in his game. He can shoot it, he can handle it, he can go down into the post. He's got great body control. I think he's an underrated player. I, I happen to, I, Kevin Jones of West Virginia had an unbelievable year leading the Big East in scoring and rebounding. But I don't disagree with mm -hmm. Jay Crowder's player of the year. Does so many things well. Future, promising. He, huh? He's an yeah. NBA player, yeah. no question. How about this guy? Makes a three. The last foul was on Jamil Wilson, and Devontae Gardner has come in for Marquette, number 54. For a lot of the year, he was their starting center. He That's was injured foul. late in the year. Siva. Didn't need it. Over. <laughs> Chris Smith. That's a three. An assist from the deck by the big fella. Pretty heady play with that fine. DJO lays it in. Acrobatic move to the bucket. He's already put his considerable athleticism on display. Now this team is never out of it, by the way. Doesn't matter what the amount of points they're down. They just are consistent with their effort. They got down, what, 18 the last time these two teams played? Fought back from that to win by 10. It was Jang late in the game, had some foul problems. That hurt. Odom Turnovers. Odom. Johnson Odom will not let Steven catch it. Chris Smith shut off by Gardner, and then Kadugan came back to help. 
Jang to the bucket. Could have been a held ball. There was no whistle. Now there is for a foul. Well, Sean Jay was saying how fresh Siva is when he is on top of his game, intellectually speaking. He is a heck of a point guard, and yet, despite the coach drilling it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Live your life. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's and Hyundai. If it's fuel efficient, affordable, stylish, and safe, it's probably a Hyundai. At least keep them from being knocked off of the bubble. Couple other scores, Colorado State. Wow. Been some great action today around championship week. Louisville off to a 12 to 6 lead here at the Garden tonight in the regular season meeting in Milwaukee in mid January Louisville led 18 to 2 six minutes into the game but by the half Marquette had the lead 34 30 and the Golden Eagles went on to win 74 63 behind 19 from Darius Johnson Odom. Siva out to Curic from the corner. And it'll be Marquette ball last touch by Gorgie Jang. I have a feeling that Rick spent a little time with Siva. I mean that play there didn't get too deep made a good decision. I mean he's really approached this game beautifully. Well, he's so fast that sometimes he can shoot right past opportunities especially in transition he can shoot past a, a ball screen. Look at this great reaction by Siva set this up oh. and the dunk by Bahannon off the pass from Chris Smith who received it from Gorgie Jang. Well, Jang is so alert. Alert blocking shots. That was a great steal and pass ahead. And Siva just sealed that sideline, Jay, and in a sense forced that long pass. Jay Crowder had it banged away by Jang, but hand in a great effort to try to save it, but he could not. Just a great job denying. You just can't throw that ball up mm -hmm. for grabs like that. You're better off getting a five second call because you're letting Louisville play ahead of your defense. Two on one. Just a brilliant pass by Chris Smith. You ever notice you can't pass around people on two on ones anymore. It's always a lot. This is exactly Numbers. what Buzz Williams said they couldn't do. Turn it over and give Louisville transition buckets. Peyton Siva capitalizes on the Marquette turnover. Buzz told us before the game we need to make Louisville play half court offense. They're not doing that so far tonight. This is as sharp as I've seen Louisville, Sean. I mean, they're really getting it out. Curry giving his guy plenty of opportunity to make that little heady attack of the chest to get three. Well, we've seen this movie before. This is the way the last game these two teams played started out. Save is going to go out for a brief breather. You surprised by that? I mean, Louisville seems to have Marquette on the ropes here a little bit early. Well, two, two, game two in a row, maybe, Sean. Yeah. I, I don't think he ever needs a rest, to be honest with you. The Lugan couldn't finish for Marquette. Churik, the pull up with the one hander. And it is eerily similar to the regular season meeting. When Louisville led by 16 to start the game, they're up by 13 tonight at Madison Square Garden. Louisville has had some issues shooting the ball over the last three or four games and Kyle Keurig had a really rough ball game against Seton Hall shooting it Rick Pitino telling him to continue to shoot it but there with the shot fake from the corner putting it on the deck getting something easy Louisville is locked in they're sure why little two three and yet they have some man principles here they are on top of their game Maybe it's the orange unis Johnson Alden of NBA three way off rebounded by Jeng. Nice give. And Bahannon from the corner set up by Kevin Ware just into the ball game a freshman guard who did not play at all last night for Louisville. With the lead Rick Pitino going a little bit deeper into his bench. Nobody back. Bahannon had to run it down. He was ahead of the field but the pass was a little off target. Marquette has turned it over five times already in six and a half minutes. Mm. Well, they are sprinting the floor. Some early offense really putting pressure on Marquette. Gang tried to follow up the miss by Kevin Ware. 
Johnson Odom foul counted and a chance for a three point play by DJ O who's been just about all the offense for Buzz Williams to this point and, and Jay what makes him so tough is he can go both ways I mean you'd say he'll favor the left he can explode to the right yeah score the go He's so big and strong and he just seeks out body contact and can finish through it. I love his intensity, his involvement. They got two heady guys running this team. Crowder we mentioned too and that guy. Kyle Kurek, the foul is first. He's gone to the bench. Johnson Odom 77% from the line. A miss, but it's tipped up and in by Jamil Wilson. Four-point play. In the, the importance bill of free throw blockouts. Squeezing, you're right. They're laying the wood on the guy. Jared Swapshire in the game for Louisville, number 21. Todd Mayo off the bench for Marquette. He's a part of that takeaway. And a travel. Good call. Vander Blue walked after he caught the long pass ahead from Jay Crowder. Too many guys in the area, Sean. That's what happened. And give credit to Russ Smith there for pursuing and getting in front of the handler. By the way, Buzz is using some of your material, big guy. I, I might add. I'll be writing for Leno in soon. A, in a better fashion as well. <laughs> Evan Ware, freshman from the Bronx, almost threw it away. Good effort by Vander Blue. Interesting to watch coaches. You score, you can coach, you can change things. Perspiration City over there. Now Marquette's starting to punch back a little bit defensively. They're coming after Louisville instead of back on their heels. That's where they spent the first six, seven minutes of the game. We're getting a lot of bodies in there now. I think he knows it's going to be a long run. Russ Smith, an air ball, but a foul, and count it for Jared Swapshire. In position. Great anticipation on the offensive glass. Well, when Russ Smith has the ball, you know you better get to the glass to rebound because that thing's going up. <laughs> Are you suggesting he doesn't have a conscience? That's a heck of an angle to make that one, isn't it? Look at Tiger Woods out there with that fist pump. Todd Mayo, his second foul. Swapshire at the line. And he finishes the three point play. 14 point lead for Louisville. Both Williams said we have to handle their pressure. They're not doing a very good job of that so far through these first seven and a half minutes. Straight zone. Blue down to the baseline to Crowder, but Blue charged after he passed off his first foul. Five fouls, now six already on the team. So Blue's going to go out. And Derek Wilson comes in. Yeah, Blue's really improved, I think. Kid who runs the floor, good rebounder, puts it on the deck, and a good defender. Ooh, off the, off the Smith. Huh? Ooh. And I think you're right. Look from here, like they went off the leg of Smith. They were right in front of us. Uh, they're going to give the ball back to Louisville. I think you'd like to argue with Derek Wilson. How about the size of him? <laughs> oh, goodness. Five second violation. Swapshire couldn't get it in, so Louisville turns it over for the third time. You know, it's interesting. Rick is hollering at Swapshire, and the reason is you have to pass as an inbounder to the first free man. Well, against this Marquette pressure, whether it's out of bounds on the side, underneath. Whatever it is, you've got to present yourself as a receiver, catch and face the defense before you do anything else. Because if you show the ball, they're going to take it. And he's been after the receiver, too. Johnson Odom off to a great start. He's an outstanding three point shooter, 40% for the year, fifth in the Big East in percentage, and made 69 threes coming in, fourth most in the Big East. Wayne Blackshear off the bench, misses his first shot. For Louisville, the freshman. Jay Crowder bounces into a three. Kept alive by Blackshear. He deflected it off the swap shot. Nice run out. By Bahannon. And good hustle back by Crowder to knock it away. We got some points and some action. Welcome to the Big East. Okay, everyone.
Louisville has struggled to shoot the ball lately, but they're 50% for the game so far and on top. When we talk about the pressure of championship week, Northwestern with major pressure on the Wildcats. Both of these teams will be heading to the NCAA tournament, certainly. Let's go inside the play. Now, this is all set up, I think, Jay, by Siva's ability to turn and face the guy, seal that sideline, and then the trap. Well, you want to get it up the sideline, or Louisville does, where they can trap just across half court. That's a coffin corner. You throw up a lame duck pass, and all of a sudden, defense turns to offense. Louisville scores an easy basket. They don't have to grind it out in a half court game. If it's a half court game, at least defensively for Marquette. They, they feel like they have an advantage against Louisville. So last night in the rock fight with Seton Hall, Louisville had 23 points for the entire first half. They scored 24 points already in this first half and more than 11 minutes remain. One of those teams that plays on and sometimes gets back to man. This time, yep, they do get back to man. Vanderbilt does that great too. Zone and then run out and get a guy. Yeah, you just zone it as it's coming in. Payton Siva missed and then a rebounding foul on Gorgie Jang, his first. What a valuable player he is. Rick up on that call because he needs that guy come down the stretch. Happened the, the last time these two played. Here comes the Louisville pressure again. Marquette has seven turnovers already. Vander Blue trying to dribble through a double team. Lost it again. Well, that kid just covers Siva. And you think you're past him, and that back pressure lucky. kills you. Mm. Sorry, Jake. Siva into Bahannon. I normally interrupt Sean. I apologize. <laughs> yes, you're an equal opportunity interrupter tonight. Junior Cadugan dribbling through the defense, and Gardner. Scores inside the sophomore from Suffolk, Virginia, who missed eight games late in the year after spraining his left knee at Villanova January 28th. He just returned to action on Saturday. Had a good game against Georgetown. 15 minutes off the bench. Gardner scored eight points at eight rebounds. Russ Smith through the traffic and a nice soft floater for the sophomore right here in his hometown. Archbishop Malloy kid Jack Curry he is thinking offense once he steps out plus the energy it's so hard to guard that high screen you know, that flat screen Vander Blue the nice baseline drive I'm sort of surprised you know how easy that was that was too easy you got to cut off that baseline yeah. this is familiar territory for Marquette they came back to win six Big East games this year when they trailed by double digits. Nice catch by Rick Patino. Alert. Great hands. He was a talented guard at UMass back in the day. Here comes this high flat screen, and Gardner just cannot guard that. Able to split it, get right into the lane, that easy little floater. Now you want to involve Gardner in as much ball screen action as you can, make him move his feet. And therefore, the substitution, Wilson. Siva with Carrick, Behan, and Jang, and Russ Smith for the Louisville Cardinals, dressed in infrared uniforms. The problem is not with your set, if you're just getting home and turning the game on. Can you imagine if they played Baylor? Oh, is that amazing? Well, it's funny, I was asking Pete Siva about the uniforms before the game, and he said, well, at least they're not as bad as Baylor, which I don't think was a glowing endorsement. For their guard tonight. But that's probably true. Traveling the call. Louisville turns it over for the fifth time. Yeah, it's interesting. Keurig was played by Odom. So, in a sense, he's iced. So, four other guys are going to have to do something. They need to set a back screen for him, something. After a rough start, Marquette is heating up. They're down by 15. Oh, goodness. Junior. Kadugan it. Where was he throwing that? I'm not sure. Homer True, maybe the radio guy. Or Jim Williams McElvain. thinks that was deflected. It was so errant. Almost looked like it had to have been deflected. But it wasn't. Under nine minutes to go now. Marquette's never won the 
Big East Championship. Louisville won it in 2009. But hand and a dunk. Well, you've got to cover that backside when you double. Top guy's got to bail his partner out. Well, you have to rotate a lot better than that. The, the double came from the baseline side, and James saw it. Did a nice job of finding Bahannon, and Bahannon is explosive off the floor. He is for a big guy. Speaking of explosive, Todd Mayo the blow by. First bucket for the freshman from Honey in West Virginia. He's the younger brother of O.J. Mayo, the Memphis Grizzlies. Churik. It popped out. Chang called for a foul. I think he's just called for the foul because he gets a team now. Mayo three. fell down. That's three, Sean. Now. And Rick Pitino was irate. I, I think you got to that's way over the plate. Now are you right Jay you always say they get the right whistle. But at this point it's over. I think they declare it clean. Yeah and you can see Carl has hesitated as if he wasn't quite sure too. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't the right call but he is upset now he's had Rick's out on the floor. Well, the rebound was clean, so you're saying when he came down, his elbow crashed into the shoulder of Mayo, that was the foul? I guess he was underneath him and landed on him, but it's one of those, it's way over. Rick, I, I, just, I haven't seen Rick this upset. You know, to me, and this, that's a pretty good rebound. Yeah, I think it's it was. Free ball. It's near incidental contact, and, and if you go by the way these games have been called throughout the tournament, it was a love tap. But if they're, if they're going to call that stuff all the time, I'm cool with it. But they haven't been. Now, Sean, is that the second foul, and that was the technical? Yeah, there are three on fouls three. on James, okay. so I wasn't sure. Technical is the third. Crowder at the free throw line. He's 74.3 for the year. I don't blame Rick Pitino for being upset. It was a clean rebound. He didn't go make contact on the rebound when he came down. His elbow hits Mayo, who's just standing underneath him. He's still mad. The the real, I mean, the real hurtful one is the technical yeah, foul. Yeah, it is. I, I didn't happen to see his reaction. Look at this, two on one. Good hustle by Carrick to flick it away from Mayo. That backflow pressure, we've seen that a number yeah. of times. They just run through the ball, they knock it away. You're not likely to get a foul doing that, and it's really effective. And they, they frequently go the other way with it, too. Oh, that's a tough call. Yeah, and then here's the reaction. He, he, Put the ball down on the court. That was the, you know, I don't know if that deserved or wanted a team. Well, I think you got I don't want to start on it early, but usually when Carl Hess is around, you're going to have something like that. But he didn't call it. He called the foul. He called the foul, but the, one of the other referees called the technical. Where's my call? I stick by the statement anyway. <laughs> Siva. <laughs> but Hannon missed the dunk. Siva wound up with it. Too much English. Oh, don't leave him. Crowder missed a three. Gardner hit the floor. Apparently they thought he flopped. He did. Chris Smith. Rebound Darius Johnson Odom. They were 15 down. They're within nine now. Gardner off to Crowder. Got his own rebound. And a block. And a foul called by Carl Hess to the Chagrin of Rick Pitino again, who's coming out to midcourt to say something to him. They called it on Bahannon, his first. Well, the officiating taking center stage here. Rick Pitino spent much of this time out talking to the officials instead of his team. It was kind of the hesitation call on the shaky. Foul on Jang, then he got the technical for putting the ball down on the court like that. And then you be the judge here. This was called on Bahannon, who's actually bailing away from Jay Crowder. Carl has the outside official. I don't think that T was warranted, Jay. I mean, there's emotion involved, it's key. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot worse. Banging the ball, I think he had good self control. You know, I agree with you, but the officials have been told. That a, a, a point of emphasis is sportsmanship, and you know they've got a quick trigger on that, and the players need to adjust to it. I, I don't like the call either, but you know, it's not like they haven't been making that call for a period of time now. The players need to adjust. Well, we could read Mike Roberts' lips. He's the official who gave Jang the technical, and he told Rick Pitino that.
Jane slammed the ball down. That's his definition of slamming it down. In any event, they go on. The missed free throws keep it a nine point game. Behan and a miss. Watshire. And he was fouled. And this is where the players have to gather themselves. Uh, you know, just keep attacking. Louisville had a great start, great game plan. Put all that in the back burner and keep going. Derek Wilson called for the foul. He's the backup point guard, number 33. Here's Swapshire. It's five out of six from the line in their win last night. Over Seton Hall. Uh, he's going to have to play well. Without Chang in there, he centers the back. And this is a good time to attack the inside. That's too, what I was just going to say. They need to attack the paint, attack the rim, get the ball inside, and go to the bucket without Jang in there. So I'm sure missed all of last year after surgery for a serious groin injury. Seven minutes to go, first half. Louisville by 11. 2 1 2 and settle. Ooh, forgot about it. And Cadogan scores. Junior from Toronto. And a solid game in their win against Louisville in the regular season. Seven points, six assists. Cadogan had three steals against the Cards. That's the way you take the ball to the basket. Well, nobody spotted him. Got to identify in that zone. And having Swapshire in there and having Jeng in there, two different things. Mm -hmm. Don't leave your feet. Nice defense. His pass got deflected and turned over, and the dunk on the finish by Vander Blue. And a Louisville timeout. Boy, how solid. Out of the blue to the 10. Forcefully. Uh, Sean and Jay, uh, we've seen some great basketball and attitude during our time together. But both of these teams play extremely hard. Make a mistake, Marquette just keeps coming at you. Whatever the score, a terrific defensive stand and then a run out. And the strong send it in. Gardner had the deflection. Crowder the nice pass ahead to Blue for the finish. And now pressure from the Golden Eagles. Swapshire, the big fella, handling the ball in the backcourt. Turned it over. And Jamil Wilson the finish. And this is reminiscent of the regular season game when Marquette trailed 18 to 2 and wound up leading at the half. They trailed by 15 tonight. Now they're back within five. Louisville has not been strong with the ball against this pressure. They're catching and dribbling, leaving the floor to make a pass. They've got to be a lot more disciplined on the offensive end. And if they are, Curie's going to get some looks. He was down the other end, but he didn't handle the initial pressure. Well, some of these back screens can get you open if you make a hard cut and run through your cut, because Marquette is trying to bump every cut. They finally get Curic a good bump, good call, Jay. And he bangs it down. Two-point two field goal for Curic. And Johnson Odom answers. That's a two as well. They are not afraid of anybody, these kids. And they just keep coming at you. Johnson Odom, first team all Big East. It's interesting, prior to the year, you would have thought that he was Marquette's. Yeah, there's a 10 second count of the backcourt. Top fire should have gone over the top to Mahana. But uncomfortable in that backcourt. Well, Kirk knocks down a shot, and Darius Johnson Odom comes straight down and just walks into a shot. I was starting to say he before the year probably would have been the guy you would have thought about Marquette, who's the best candidate to be the player of the year in the conference it was Crowder who has emerged Swapshire after the problems in the backcourt in a couple of possessions has gone out Zach Price number 12 a freshman is into the ball game for Louisville and Buzz, Buzz Williams is telling us before the game that he thinks Jay Crowder is the best player that Marquette has had in his time at Marquette he's been there five years four as the head coach one as an assistant to Tom Green Crowder making the coach Look prophetic with that statement, and it's a three-point game, and the Golden Eagles are surging. And Marquette, both these teams have fight in them. And Marquette has a ton of fight in them. Nice play by Curry Littleton. What a nice rebound. Goodness. Mentioned explosiveness by <laughs> oh. Crowder just has everything in his game. And he can shoot the three in transition. He pick and pop, pick and roll. 
And good in strength. Huh? Yeah, and he's good in the post, good rebounder, and where he's really extraordinary, Bill, is defensively the amount of deflections and steals he gets at his size. And you were saying this morning in the meeting, too, he could play so many spots on the floor. Right. Different guys, big, little, quick. He's like a queen on a chessboard. You can move him anywhere you want. Jack Price missed the front end of a one and one. Just three for 13 for the year from the line. Devontae Gardner has two fouls. Devontae still in the game for Buzz Williams. Do you two buy the theory that you know you press a pressing team or zone a zone team? I mean, it's amazing how they both have had problems, which is something they work on every day. I just think a good press gives anybody problems yeah. if you really can press. Well, this team, this Marquette team, is so strong and athletic, and they come straight after you. And they're disciplined, though. They don't foul when they do it. And normally, presses are very good at home, not quite as good in the road. Not with these two. Johnson Odom the missed one-handed rebound and the finish by Jamil Wilson, sophomore from Racine, Wisconsin. Russ Smith had no shot on that blockout. No. Not, not a good shot there either. Nobody underneath. Quick jack. Well, from 15 down, and now a chance for the first lead of the night for Marquette. Junior Cadugan way off with an almost NBA three. Peyton Siva trying to blow by nice. Kadugan. Found Jurek for three. That was made by the speed demon from Seattle. But how did he stop going that fast? It's like great balance. Gardner. Watshire the defender. Tough pass. Wilson was right on the end line and lost it out of bounds with Bahannon. Defending 11 turnovers perplexing Buzz Williams, but despite the sloppiness with the ball, Darius Johnson Odom and the Marquette Golden Eagles have battled from 15 down. They're within four. And they'll learn their fate on Selection Sunday. ESPN will bring you all the information you need to know at 6 Eastern catch Sports Center for coverage of the brackets at 7 Eastern. The experts will break it down with two hours of bracketology presented by Staples. You can find out who's in, which teams the bubble burst, and who our experts predict will be headed to the final four. Exciting night back in the studio tonight. We understand not only will Digger be a part of the halftimes, but he's going to appear on the late sports center tonight which is a real bonus for basketball fans I know Digger's looking forward to it too. Well Digger Phelps is a workhorse you know you have to have stamina to be able to stay up at that late sports center and I'm glad to hear we'll be watching it as soon as we get back to the hotel. Hope they have a lot of cue cards. But hand again they have to hurry to get it over. And Swapshire lays it in. You got to make them pay and they did. Oh, nice turn and attack. Marquette had a chance to take its first lead. Kadugan took a bad three. And since then, Louisville has pushed its margin back up to six. Kadugan's got to start taking care of the ball. He's got six turnovers. That bad shot to me is seven. Crowder missed the reverse layup. Then perhaps out of frustration, fouled Swapshire. And that's the second foul on Jay Crowder. He's already had seven rebounds to go with his six points in his first half. Well, when you start playing basketball, all you worry about is protecting the ball. That's what you're taught. Against these two teams, you have to squeeze it. They scrape and pull. And you never know where they are. You get, <laughs> you get by somebody, and you think you're okay, and they come by and take it from behind. You mentioned a couple times some similarities to the regular season meeting in Milwaukee. Louisville in the first six minutes jumped out 18 to two wound up trailing at the half and losing the game. They played that one without Kyle Keurig who had a sprained ankle. Swapshire. And so when you're this aggressive as both these teams are when you play aggressive defense it's really important to play aggressively without fouling mm -hmm. because the free throw line becomes a weapon for you. A nice tip back. Curing get a good look out of it. And Russ Smith capitalizes, and all of a sudden the lead's back up to nine for Louisville with two and a half to go in the half. And Cadugan struggling with the defense of Smith. 
That's wow, Kadugan Kadu Kadu Kadu. knocked him down. Good call by Brian O'Connell. Hey, you cannot cross over in front of Russ Smith. You just can't do it. And Kadugan now has, by my count, eight turnovers. Wow. Seven turnovers and a really bad shot that served as a turnover. Oh, she tries to cross over in front of him. And he did it twice. And Smith just knocked it away from him. Let me ask you this, Jay. Why can't you pick the ball up anymore? With a guy like, can't you just pick it up? I mean, you don't want to, but the guy plays great defense. Somebody's got to get free for you or look over the top. Or use your body. Oh, you got to protect initially. Back him down, but, but I mean, to show the ball like that, good guards can't get away from you. Can't get away with that against a really good guard. Mm -hmm. and Russ Smith is one of the better steals guys in the country. For, as far as steals rate, he's top seven. Brian O'Connell saying nobody had control of the ball at the time of the foul, so there's no shooting involved. It is the tenth foul on Marquette, so be the double bonus the rest of the way. Swapshire had a little trouble on the reception. Got it out to Bahannon. And Russ Smith's three wouldn't go. Wow, Todd Mayo was way up in the air, and Devontae Gardner wound up with the board for the Golden Eagles. Swapshire's done a nice job. Good kick out pass there. How about that cross? Kadugan, the bucket. Four points for Junior Kadugan, who tripped going across the midcourt line. Curic, nicely done. The three was guarded, so he stepped into a baseline two. Boy, players are slipping on that logo at center court, but Hannon went down as he tried to go from one end to the other. Numbers. Siva. Foul counted, and Jay Crowder just picked up his third foul. Woo. What an aggressive nature. He has been as solid as I have seen him. Steve on top of his game, the push. Does he bring some excitement to the game? Huh? He just can't keep him in front. And with all the players hitting the deck over the last couple of possessions, they're going to need a Zamboni out there. Clean everything up. A really aggressive take by Peyton Siva. And he completes the three-point play. How about this? It looked like Marquette was poised to take the lead. And now Crowder's on the bench with three fouls. Jang has been sitting ever since he got his third on the technical. And it's a 13-2 run for Louisville. Russ Smith really struggling to get off the floor, Sean. Hurt his toe or ankle. Got his shoe off over there. Johnson Odom with the right hand scoops it in. 13 points in the half for Johnson Odom, who has scored at least 17 points in six of the last seven games. He is the second leading scorer in the Big East in the regular season behind Kevin Jones of West Virginia. Another three, this one from Chris Smith. And Siva, huh? Siva's killing him. He is. He's on his penetration. A terrific cut for the handoff, getting in the lane, drawing the defense. He's been terrific. Decision making has been extraordinary. That's a key for him because sometimes it isn't always great. He has six assists tonight. Johnson Odom in NBA three and the soft touch. And Shane Bahannon was right there with a hand up. Hey, you don't mind that shot, really. That was past the NBA line. Well, that line for Siva. 11, five rebounds, six assists, and three steals. Need to get going here. You don't want to wait too long. Yeah, well, he doesn't take long to get to the rim, but I'd go right now so he can get a rebound if he does miss. Well, he we threw it out, and the hand and just did get it off with Blue contesting. Well, impressive response by Louisville after. Marquette answered their game opening run with a big surge and had a shot to take the lead. Louisville pushed it back up to 10 points. Here's Beth Mowens. Well, thank you very much, Sean. Well, Coach Wangorgi Jang went out. It was a nine-point lead, and your guys were able to stay composed and keep it together. What was the key for you once he left? We want to really play up tempo because we've been accused of slowing it down at home because South Florida wants to play that way. What are we supposed to do? Just uh, go out and foul them to speed up the tempo like in football, let the other team score so you can get the ball. That's South Florida's game. So we wanted to play up and down. We knew they'd play it. Gorky made a terrible mistake mentally. Probably doesn't realize the technical is an extra personal foul, but 
I thought I didn't think that was the best of calls. You had a better vision, a view of it than me. Thank you very much, Rick. <laughs> Say it's become must-watch TV. Rick Pitino, these interviews here at the Big East Championship. His team scored 50 points in the half. They lead 50 to 40. Now to Reese Hubert and the hard-working Richard Digger Phelps, the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Reputation. It takes years to build one. At Madison Square Garden, we're going 30 strong. This is the Big East Tournament. Think you've seen it all? You haven't. And welcome back to the Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Third quarter final game of the day here at Madison Square Garden. The number two seed Marquette in action for the first time in this Big East Championship and trailing the number seven seed Louisville 50 to 40 at the half. Louisville led by 15. Marquette got within one and then Louisville pushed it back up late in the half. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Rathry. After the win last night over Seton Hall, Rick Pitino said it was the best game Peyton Siva's played this season. He might say that again tonight. He might have to because Peyton Siva has been locked in. He's been tremendous with his ability to get to the rim with his speed, getting into the middle of the floor. And he's got shooters that are spotting up, running to the three-point line. He draws two defenders. He's able to get it to Kyle Keurig, stepping into an open three. Then he gives up his dribble. Hits a teammate, comes off for a handoff, gets into the middle. Everybody looking at Peyton Siva. He's able to get it to an open teammate for a three. He is finding people. He is scoring. He is defending. Six assists, three steals. And only two turnovers, I might add, and great decisions. And his mates have pressured Marquette into 12 first-half turnovers. That was the big problem for Marquette. Marquette shot 51% for the half. Trails by 10 as Louisville had its highest scoring first half of the season after scoring 61 in the entire game last night against Seton Hall. Rick Pitino said they wanted to go up and down, and it has. Jake Crowder begins the second half for Marquette, playing with three fouls. Gorgie Jang still on the bench for Louisville with three. Nice job in the back by Swapshire. And a nice move oh. by Wilson. He spun away from Kyle oh, Keurig and Jamil Wilson threw it down. He has eight points with this lead. Rick Pitino opting to keep Gorgie Jang on the bench. Ooh. See if he can steal some more minutes without him picking up his fourth. See the foul is Carl Hess calling the fourth on Crowder. Okay, that kid put so much pressure on you turning the corner. They're looking for the call to be on somebody else, but the pressure of the bounce, the explosiveness, and this changes the game totally. And it might be wow. changing the call. Carl Hess signaled 32, and now he's changing it. And it's going to be on Jamil Wilson. By the way, I don't think he was touched. I don't think he was touched. By either of them. Correct. The second foul on Wilson. And the lead back to 10. Pressure from Louisville that was so effective in the first half. Siva poked it away from Darius Johnson Odom. I don't know why Marquette insists on trying to dribble through traffic in the middle of the floor. It's going to get taken away and knocked away. Pick it up. It must be part of their plan because Buzz Williams never seems upset when they turn it over in that situation, the dribbling through the traffic. Let's check in with Beth Mowens. Well, I had a chance to uh, talk to Buzz Williams on the way back out on the floor. You know he's a big stats and numbers guy. By his calculation, Louisville only scored six points in the first half in their half-court set. He said job number one is to quit helping them offensively. And uh, Jay Crowder, very emphatic with his leadership, particularly with his point guard, Junior Cadugan. You guys talked about the seven turnovers. They told him, be the point guard you've been all year and quit being soft. Boy, ball pinballed around everywhere. Wound up with Jamil Wilson to Junior Cadogan now. Nice block by Siva. Boy, does he hustle. Never stops. And I think the press helps 
them in the open floor. And that's one of the reasons they're able to score in Louisville, but this is just sensational coordination. Kid's an incredible athlete. That was all leather. What a <laughs> tremendous play by Peyton Siva. <laughs> he comes up with stuff you can't expect. Manil Wilson missed the putback after the layup didn't fall for Vander Blue. Swapshire gave it off to Siva with Bohannon, Chris Smith, and Curick. Early in the second half for Louisville. And Marquette's missing one foot shots without Jang in the game. That is not a good trend. So everybody trying to sell the little chunk as they cut. Not sure they have to sell it. They're getting hit by some strong bodies. Nice cut. Bahannon off the swap shire. Bahannon in the lane forever. And it's taken off the floor by Kadugan. Maybe they couldn't tell it's camouflaged in that <laughs> orange lane. Johnson on the miss, but the offensive rebound by Vander Blue, the sophomore from Madison, Wisconsin. And a travel called against Darius Johnson Odom. You know, it's interesting, Sean. Odom took that jumper with nobody on the rim, but Vander Blue ran it down. He's doing some things that you're unaccustomed to seeing. Buzz Williams, as always, very energetic over there, coaching up his team, 39-year-old Texas native. And finally starting to get recognition around the country for the terrific job he is doing. At Marquette, they'll be on their way to the NCAA tournament for the fourth year in a row under his tutelage. Wow. The hand and wasn't ready for the pass from Siva, an unforced error. Well, you know, one of those deals, Siva shouldn't have thrown it, but you got to see the ball. And just to continue on Buzz, it's amazing the level he has his team play every single night. They may not shoot it well, but they are competing each and every ball game. They practice as hard as any team that you'll watch. Even the warm-ups today, Jay, you and I were standing together talking to Buzz during the warm-up. They had out the football pads, and they were hammering guys who were taking layups in the warm-up drills. Yeah, they really go hard. And go hard all the time. When they lace them up, they play. They weren't wearing pads. They were using those pads to hit the players as they were taking Layups. Kyle Keurig just still can't get threes to go. He's now one out of seven, but there was a foul in the follow up activity on Devontae Gardner. That's his third. They can't contain Bahannon. I mean, his activity along the offensive glass is drawing a lot of attention. They're having to push and shove, and, and he's such a, an explosive leaper around the basket. And foot speed, too, and Gardner limited in that particular area. Siva gets a breather. Russ Smith on the court now with Turek, Swapshire, Bahannon, and Chris Smith. Yeah, and then he just lofted it up in the direction of Bahannon, who was able to corral it. Chris Smith for three. Barely grazed the rim. Down to Vander Blue. Johnson Odom might have traveled again and tried to dump it off to Crowder, who gave it back. And DJ O was fouled. Like he hit his head. Yeah. Let's hope he's okay. <laughs> Tough kid. He did walk down there in the first shot. I mean, I'm, a, I'm amazed at his strength and his hang time as well. He is a tough competitor. He'd make a pretty good linebacker, wouldn't he? 6'2, 215. Maybe in today's football, a hard hitting strong safety. Hard hitting something. I mean, he's relentless. I wouldn't want to be hit with him no matter what the weight was. No. He's got a little LT attitude, I think. Swapshire, the foul is first. Darius Johnson Odom was first team all Big East, as was Jay Crowder, who was the only unanimous selection. The first team all Big East. They're the only team that had two first team all conference players, and there's a look at DJO hitting his head hard wow. as he snapped back when he hit the floor. Thank God we didn't have to wear these uniforms when I played. I'd be kicking sand at me. <laughs> Pressure from Marquette in the backcourt. Chris Smith trying to handle it. The receive out of the game. Now Swapshire gets it over with about two seconds to spare. Staying at home on Keurig. And stripped by Odom. Keurig got it back. Wapshire pull it out down to 10 on the shot clock for Louisville. And where 
or rather Price called for a moving screen a little too physical as he rattled the cage of Derek Wilson. I hate those giveaways without shot opportunities. First foul on the freshman Zach Price. Kevin Ware comes in a ball game now. Interesting. We don't have a low post presence to speak of. Regardless, there's a lot of bumping and then running to the block. Crowder missed the three. Swapshire the rebound. Crowder hasn't been able to get any rhythm in this game at all. He hasn't had a lot of touches. He's done a nice job of keeping the ball out of his hands. He has six points. He averages 17 and a half. One in the hander popped off for Smith, who got it back, and another one that bounced off for Russ Smith. <laughs> you know, when you're playing when you call him a jogger, he really has an energy for offense. Johnson Odom from Crowder. Ooh, and a tip by Ware back to Crowder. And count the bucket for Devontae Gardner. Well, that's his job. Carve out some territory. Hit that offensive glass. A renewed spirit right now by Marquette. And a foul on Kyle Curick, his second. Coverage of self. Now hopefully that much anticipated movie has an exciting ending like the two we saw this afternoon. Syracuse was down by eight in the second half, rally to beat Connecticut by three. Cincinnati trailed by 11 in the second half and downed Georgetown in double overtime despite going two for 21 from the three point line. The Bearcats so so far based on the seeds really form has held throughout this. Big East Championship, but right now the two seed Marquette down by six against the seven seed Louisville. Gardner couldn't finish the three point play. Louisville 0 for 8 from the floor here in the second half. Yancey Gates played as well as I've seen him today. He was terrific. More of that certainly would help that team. Clean look because of the fade. Rick Pitino wants Curick to keep shooting. He's trying to shoot his way out of the slump. Not successfully. So and Crowder. Got it to bounce home. They're back within four. They trailed by ten at the half. And that emblem knocked down two Louisville players. Yeah, that's no problem. This sticker on the middle of the court, or wherever it is, the logo has been slippery. Players have been falling. Well, they need to keep setting ball screens with Gardner out front. Swapshire can find an opening. A Louisville turnover. They're twelve. Receiver with two turnovers this half. Watch this. Two guys down. That sort of helps your fast break, doesn't it? Did it in. Well, why not just run your offense toward the logos and hope that the defenders will slip down when you run them into them? Not yeah. a bad idea. Yeah, they're going to invent something with a light that comes down at some point. You eliminate it. You can get the same impact. I think they've already got that kind of technology. It's our, our clock, yeah. shot clock that's yeah. on the floor. But can you see it in the arena? That's the key, you know what I mean? You know, Rick Pitino will come back with Gorgie Jeng soon. He hasn't played at all since he picked up his third foul with 8.15 left in the first half. Yeah, Jay was thinking more like the 12 minute time as long as they can hang and a little bit of control. I would agree with that. There, there you goes. go. There you go. Asking you shall receive. Boy, Sean, the impact you have. Swapshire's had a nice night. Goes out when Jang left with 8:15 left in the first half. Louisville led by seven, so they've lost just three points off the lead. With him saddled with the three fouls, Crowder was on the sideline, and Marquette turns it over for the 15th time. There's a Patino philosophy: you don't give up on anything. The pass, Sheba went over on the bigger guy, crowded Crowder, and yep. the ensuing step out of bounds. And Bahamon did a nice job on the ball. His pogo stick jumped up and down and made it difficult. Here goes Smee's going. Pretty. And Kurek laid it in. Set up by Russ Smith. Now, I think Buzz would call that in transition. I would call that a half court. They beat the press and took advantage. Oh. 
Anytime you can attack, certainly makes them think a little bit. This is unusual, huh? A little assist as Russ gets airborne. It's about two a game. Nice compliment, Kirk with the left. Whoa, tough inbounding pass. Siva almost took it away. Vander Blue got it back. Blue, Kadugan, Johnson Odom, and Crowder out there along with Wilson. And a Louisville foul on Chris, on Russ Smith. How about the speed, huh? He he recovery? On Siva, his first. I think he reached in as well, Sean. He did get banged initially. By Smith. Oh, goodness. Too easy. Blue came right down the middle of the lane that had the easy bucket. They're back within four. James got to be careful. He doesn't pick up a moving screen here. Northern just with the giveaway on Curic. He's been taking care of business. Great denial. Just a nice step and cut. Nobody at home. Siva just started looking at the ball instead of guarding Vander Blue. And also, the, you know, you really, as you said, jump up and get the hands. Don't make that pass completed that easily. Well, I, I think you have to play an angle to take away right under the basket and Chase have it inbound and go on the short yeah. side of the floor. Absolutely. Derek after the shot fake. Dang, with a nice hustle. Unfortunately, he didn't come up with it. And up in the hands of Vander Blue trying to make a move on Siva. Offensive foul call. Great read. Second foul on Vander Blue and five already in the half against Marquette. Four on Louisville. When you play at a certain pace like this, sometimes your judgment doesn't prevail. Right. You, know, you get a little too deep. Well, most of the time, I think you want to treat as a guard you want to treat that free throw line as a stop sign mm -hmm. now if you're Buzz Williams and you say you want Louisville to play half court offense would you just fall back and play half court defense well they, they think they can churn you up and cause turnovers they have that ability or make you shoot quickly Chang. and there's the fourth on Crowder as he hip checked Russ Smith out of bounds it's a smart play by Russ Smith. I think he might have sold it a little bit. There was clearly contact and there was a foul, but he did a nice job of selling it. And the guy that caused this foul, it began with that rebound by Chang, and you're right. Yeah. It's a seller's market here in the city. Did you visit your money down on Wall Street, Jim? I mean, you had a lot of time for yourself. <laughs> That's a really tough call against Marquette. Four fouls on Crowder. See to the miss. Jang the offensive rebound. Ooh, why? Mm. Because it was there. <laughs> that reminds me of Mellow Shot, huh? Nice. In the lane. Strip. Jang could have picked up his fourth there. Siva. And the tip wouldn't go over Swapshire. He has another chance. Jang pokes it out. And a nice play by Siva over to Russ Smith. Kurek is wide open. And there's a three. And Odom took a shot. But how about the hustle? Almost got there, didn't he? He's amazing with those quick feet. Turn up the music. Peyton Seaver's got the puppies moving. And speaking of moving and grooving in Manhattan, Louisville on top of their game with a lot of hustle. The kick out, James corner, destiny. This game is streaming live on your computer, tablet, or smartphone via watchespn.com and the Watch ESPN app. Here's a look at tonight's who's shaping up for Louisville in the Big East Championship brought to you by Asics. Peyton Siva last night look at his line against Seton Hall 14 points career high six steal five rebounds three assists and similar numbers tonight with more than half of the second half still to be played. And where, where Louisville's made a big impact is on the offensive glass. Louisville's got 22 offensive rebounds. They're two of 18 from the field in the second half, yet they still lead 
because they're getting extra possessions off the offensive glass. And they're not jumping rebounds, speed rebounds. Into Kadug and strong move to the bucket. Too strong with the shot here. Siva leading the break. Russ Smith for three. There's a chase. That's the Al speed. Jerk, that offensive rebound and then a reach in on Gardner. That puts Marquette over the limit with 11.22 to go. Well, that is a big deal to be in the one and one this early. And also the big guy in the hole with Crowder as well. And Tule not available having been injured earlier in the year. And Chris O'Toole was their starting center. Crowder's going to come back in with four fouls in for Devante Gardner leaves with his four. Tule suffered a season ending knee injury on December 6th. So for a while Gardner was the starting center. Then he got hurt. And they went to a different lineup. Buzz Williams has really liked coaching three different teams over the course of the season. Uh, he drills them diligently. The expectations he has for them and the demands they meet each and every day. The results are culminates in great effort and victories. Now one thing that Louisville, they want to continue to keep the heat on. But you got to do it without foul. You don't want to put Marquette into the one and one with you. Louisville's five team fouls this half. Mayo, offensive foul. The Swapshire has been terrific in this <laughs> yes, game. He has a real big smile. As Sean mentioned, in the basket, he's got a double double, but the defense has been most impressive. Just sealing that deal on the baseline. Three fouls on Mayo. Jamil Wilson's going to come back in. And Crowder goes out with the four fouls again. A little offense to defense switch. They'll do that as often as they can to try to keep Jay Crowder in the game. So you mentioned Swapshire. He's two points away from his first career double double. He has eight points and 12 rebounds tonight for Louisville. Okay, they do a great job, Marquette. Big guy gets the ball. They tried to deny everybody. Force him into a mistake. Look at this matchup now. To Dugan on Jang. He should get a rebound if it's a miss. Wilson pulled it off the rim, and here's Johnson Owens at a quiet second half after a very busy first half. To Dugan open from the elbow. It's a seven point game with ten and a half to go. They don't go away. Uh, that's what exactly what they wanted. Did it earlier? This one results in a turnover. Ron Anderson is deep down the bench ordinarily is in the game the freshman number 10 Wilson a three that would not go it wasn't close. But Keurig has made himself in such a terrific basketball player. Timeout. Well, Siva went down looking for a foul call and didn't get it. Chang didn't want to take the open foul line jumper. Like a bullet and Keurig looks tired. I've never seen him tired. Count the bucket. And a chance for three more for Peyton Siva. Just too quick. Can't stay in front of him. How would you like to go to bed at night knowing the next day you're going to have to guard him? And the coach says, keep him in front of you. Sure, coach, I got no shot. I need some help in a pinch. Terrific use of the floater. Kid is tough, getting better and better. This is just a great performance. See, see, but he thought it was on him. He looked as if to say, I'd already let the ball go, so even though I charged, count the basket. And he was pleasantly surprised when they called it on Kadugan. It looked like it could have been a no call. Nine point game. I mentioned it earlier. Six times this year, Marquette came from double digits down to win a conference game. They're not going to do it if Mayo keeps making passes like that. Siva, Zheng the offensive rebound. Oh, and he did a great job on the other end. And the travel call against Zheng. Got to go straight up or kick it out. He just had it too long. And one thing Marquette has not done a very good job of, they have not gotten a lot of paint touches. You know, they talk about getting in the lane 47 50 times a game and Louisville has done a great job of keeping Marquette out of the lane. And when Chang's in it's that much tougher. Whoa another oh, slip. Same thing on the, on the logo. Yeah on the Dave Gavitt logo I might add. Uh, the leader of this conference phenomenal human being. 
I, right there, same thing. I think you are going to see uh, over the off season that some of the rules, the rules committee is going to get together and say if it is not painted on the floor, it has no business on the floor. And if Dave were alive, God bless him, he would <laughs> agree with you totally. The architect of this great conference, and with all the money these conferences make and generate, you know they can they can spend a few bucks for a little bit of paint because it's a, it's really a an injury issue as well. But this is the New York Knicks floor. Get the paint off it somehow. Cadogan, after the turnover, makes it a seven-point game. Ooh. And a timeout has been called by Louisville. Leading by seven with 9.03 to go. Nine oh three to go in this Big East Championship quarterfinal. Louisville, which has led throughout a seven-point lead over Marquette, nine minutes to go. The Big Ten tournament first round's underway. It's a huge part of championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Iowa defeated Illinois today. They'll play Michigan State tomorrow at noon on ESPN. Indiana defeated Penn State. They'll take on Wisconsin at two. Minnesota, an overtime win over Northwestern. Could be a crushing loss for Northwestern with an eye toward their first NCAA appearance. Minnesota Michigan on ESPN 3 630 tomorrow Purdue and Nebraska right now on ESPN 2 and uh, this uh, spot throw in back screen go long somebody pops to the ball it's really amazing Louisville could shoot the ball so poorly in the second half and still have a seven point lead. Yeah, it's all about defense too. Yeah, defense they just great. compete. Make it tough for you. Three for 22 in the second half is ruled, but they've lost only three points off their 10 point halftime lead. Chris Smith back to Siva. Payton has a career high eight rebounds tonight. They list him perhaps generously at six feet tall. Ten to shoot. Curic. Handed it off to Siva. Derek Wilson right on his hip. Tough shot, but he had to do it with the shot clock running out and Bahannon just as the buzzer was about to sound. Great position. He's terrific under the hoop, isn't he? He's had a terrific game. Yeah. And anytime there's an air ball, the offense has an advantage. Like advantage. The defense is looking to box and waiting for it to hit the rim, and the offense gets to follow it. Now, Lonnie Anderson getting major minutes. He averages five minutes a game. He's only played in 21 of their 31 games prior to tonight, but he's in there. He missed, and then the tip was missed by Blue. Curic, the shot fake again. The corner two wouldn't go. The freshman Wilson out of Anchorage, Alaska. Nice fake, but he didn't lose. Curic. What a hustle play. Goodness. You've got to be ready to compete. And who better to exemplify that than the two mentors on the sideline? The aggressive nature. Give me a discard. What are you doing? No wonder I need a little hairdo like Sean McDonough. <laughs> Clean that scalp. Heads up play. So Seton Hall doesn't play, and they jump back into the tournament field. If they continue not to play, they will. Will they continue to rise? It's possible. <laughs> the other teams that they're competing with for those last few spots lose. You look better by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> As Rick Pitino said, I don't know why you were even questioning the wisdom of Joe. I'm not questioning. I'm argument. noting it. Rick's become some uh, character in those right. interviews. Kyle Churik will shoot two. Double bonus the rest of the way for Louisville. They've still committed just the five team fouls. Here in the second half, lead up to 10, despite the fact that they're four for 25 from the floor in the second half. They've had a season high 25 offensive rebounds, and Marquette's turned it over 20 times. So you can shoot poorly and win when those numbers balance it out. Wow, 21 mm. turnovers as Cadugan threw a fastball. Right pile, Jamail Jones. Well, you had better be alert in the first three rows when. Junior Cadugan's bringing the ball down the court in this game. He has not been sure handed as a point guard. In this Number game. eight, I think. He is. 
eight. That was his first of the second half, however. Seven and a half to go. Louisville has been in the championship game two of the last three years. They won it in 2009 over Syracuse. That was the year Syracuse and Connecticut had the amazing six overtime quarterfinal game. And then Louisville lost in the championship game by three last year to Connecticut during their scintillating run through the Big East and then on to the NCAA. Vander Blue throws it down. Well, that's one of those that were milking the clock without much sort of a flow to the offense, and it cost them late. Nice run out. Jay Crowder, the Big East player of the year on the bench with four fouls. He's not been a factor in a major way tonight. Just eight points on three out of 11 shooting. Well, that's pretty aggressive defensive stand-up. James did a nice shot screen, getting to the rim. You mentioned the offensive rebounds. Himself six. Hard jump stop by Chris Smith. Rebound Jang. Nicely done by Gorgie Jang, the sophomore from the car, Senegal. How about that? His seventh offensive rebound. Well, second shots are killing Marquette. Absolutely killing. How many offensive rebounds do you have in your career? Probably five less than Louisville's got in this game. <laughs> No, no, don't chastise yourself. You were tough. A lot of misses to go get, though. <laughs> Moses. That's right. Go chase it. I don't going to miss it. Well, here are the numbers. Well off his season average in points. Did have nine rebounds in 25 minutes. Jay Crowder, unanimous first team off Big East. It's been a tough night for Jay Crowder. He's not gotten a lot of touches. And Sean didn't like that call. That was one of those uh, maybe not going over there. Not much to gain against the smaller guy. But what a year he's had. And a great two years. Walter Berry is the only other junior college player to be the Big East player of the year. Two years in junior college for Crowder. He's at Howard College in Big Spring, Texas, national player of the year. And his school won a national championship. Hard to believe that as a kid growing up in Georgia, he was chubby. One of the reasons why he was a late bloomer in basketball. Typical of the kind of kids Buzz likes to have. Give you everything every minute. Well, Johnson Odom was a junior college player as well in Hutchinson in Kansas in his third year at Marquette. Over 1,500 points, nearly 1,600 now for Johnson Odom in just three years in Milwaukee. Crowder's been held down in games before this year. Had only two against Wisconsin, had four against Notre Dame. Still only a three possession game. You get a couple turns, this can be different. Wow. Pick and pop, huh? Yeah. I just slip out there, big fella. Maybe Jang from the wing. And Siva has it back again. Three on one break with Kadugan back. Bahannon juggled the pass and it threw him off. He can't come away with nothing there. We got to score. Three on one. Yep. Clean handle. Let's see how upset Rick Petito was at that missed golden opportunity. Under five minutes to go. Wow. Well, Johnson Odom turns around and looks at Carl Hess as if to say, Are you kidding me? That was a foul, too. Well, where was Russ going? You've got to pick the ball up. Gee. You don't turn it over, but a pretty good defensive play as well. Well, it's been a very exciting day. First two days were a little bit on the dull side. Not today. Deion Waiters, 18 points. Syracuse, a three-point win over Connecticut. Then Cincinnati came from 11 down in the second half to beat Georgetown in two overtimes. Yancey Gates, 23 points, eight rebounds. For Mick Cronin, for the two teams that had the double bye in that matchup, Syracuse and Cincinnati both advance. And UConn had won 13 straight postseason games. The five here last year, the six in the NCAA tournament, and two more here before Syracuse sent them home. We love the way that Cincinnati hung in there against Georgetown. 
How about the play of Henry Sims in this tournament? It's incredible. He's, he's worked himself into a... He's an he's, NBA player. Yeah, he is. He, he is. He's you know, fabulous. On the, on the way over here, Jay was saying he had gates all of his teaching at the skills camp. <laughs> finally sunk in. Foul underneath, away from the ball. Apparently Swap Shire gave a little shot with the arm to Jay Crowder. Still not over the limit. Gardner goes out and Wilson comes back in. Jamil Wilson. A really good defensive discipline by Louisville to get to this point in the game. I mean, they should have been, they should have been over the limit on the last last possession when they fouled twice in the same possession when ball. And it's the same thing. You don't face the ball to the corner. Jump up and down. You open up that bat. You gotta help your teammates. Boy, pretty good. Handed. Pretty good saving, basket saving play by Kyle Kurick there. A former caddy at Valhalla. Oh, oh, Caddy Day at the pool. Did you uh, hope he didn't have the misfortune well? of caddying for Jay because Jay blames every Aaron shot on the caddy. <laughs> and there are many of them. Many caddies? No, many Aaron shots. And followed by numerous pouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a grab. Good call. Well, Smith, the speed and anticipation of the Louisville kid, as well as Marquette, in a sense, but. You can't put it down. They're coming from all sides. So that's the foul that puts Rick Patino's team over the limit. The first on Russ Smith and Junior Cadugan. A one and one and a big trip for a 70% free throw shooter. Down by 11 with time running out. Johnson Odom is going to come out. Perhaps to the TV timeout at the first whistle under four minutes. Oh, does he give you a lot of time on the floor? It's amazing. Well, really, a seven-minute difference in the second half between when Louisville got into the one and one and when Marquette did. And by the end of the game, the fouls will look the same, but the amount of time you spend in the one and one is really significant. It was about seven minutes, right? If I'm not mistaken. About 11. Uh, 11 and change. Double digit lead for Louisville. And they're in their 24th win of the year. And given all the injuries that they've had, it's just another in a long line of terrific coaching jobs by Rick Pitino. And his team has talent, but they're also proving again tonight whether you can do with hard work and effort. Well, he's been using the clock a little bit each trip. Look at the explosiveness. <laughs> Split the D and take it to the 10. 17 points for Siva. What? Kadugan stumbled, lost the ball, was afraid he was going to get called for a travel or double dribble. But Carl Hess said no. There was something on the court that he stepped on. So he stopped the play, and they're going to give the ball back to Marquette. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by American Eagle Outfit. Yeah, it's a very tough loss in a situation that they're in. You need to beat Minnesota. Jay Crowder scores. And they look at Brian O'Connell as if to say, I think I was fouled. I think he was right. Wow, Siva just threw it up for grab. Deflected out of bounds by Mayo. Ten-point lead Louisville. 316 to go. It is amazing. Louisville has 73 shot attempts in this game. 71 points and 73 shot attempts. 26 offensive rebounds. That's five more than they have defensive rebounds. And a season high, as we noted earlier. That's dangerous by that logo. I don't think I'd be dancing around there. Well, I, I gotta tell you, I've never seen a referee blow a whistle with a loose ball though, for somebody slipping. You know, Kadugan didn't slip on a logo, he just slipped. A spot on the floor where there was no logo. Russ Smith, the bucket. And the number nine team of the country, number two seed, second place team in the Big East, is in a heap of trouble now. Marquette down by 12 with under three minutes to go. And you notice the last two trips, though, attacking the rim. First by Crowder, that time by Odom. A lefty who can go right just as well. Johnson Odom at the line, the foul on Seaver, his third. Big miss again. Earlier this year, Buzz Williams' team trailed 
against Louisville by 16 came back and won they trailed at Villanova by 18 and one fell behind Seton Hall by 11 at home beat them trailed the fall by 12. Down to Connecticut by 12, down to West Virginia by 15. They won all those games, but they're going to have to hurry if they're going to pull off one more from double digits. And Kyle Kirk makes it hurt. And a wonderful read by Smith. And no balance. And Smith is a one man press break. He is, you're right. He broke that all by himself. Almost picked up the charge there. Good call, though. Odom can really wreak havoc with that body. One thing you don't want to do if you're Louisville right now is foul to put Marquette at the free throw line. Let him score with no time going off the clock. Set up some pressure. Yeah, Keurig really is terrific. He does a great job on the long rebound on the missed free throw. Gets in there, mixes it up, helps the inside guy beautifully. I think he's getting in there too early, this thing that Carl has. No, they're telling him to tuck their shirts in. Two free throws by Johnson Odom. Senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Pressure in the backcourt. And a foul call. Buzz Williams thought it was a dive. But he's really in the ear of Mike Roberts as Russ Smith certainly uh, sold the call. I think it was the right call though, Sean, don't you? Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. It was just uh, the he banged him and anytime you yeah, just rode him out of bounds. Yeah. The belly bump. You pay for it. And Wilson gave a little little extra to the official, but Mike Roberts didn't seem to think that was too much. He didn't put the ball on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first game that we've had involving Marquette this year. Buzz Williams is a different looking person. He told us before the game he's lost 37 pounds since the end of last season. And he doesn't have the burden we have. <laughs> you keep so thin because of the stress of working with the two of us? Well, not the well, one of you. They're trying to cross over in front of Smith again. And Johnson Odom had to foul Russ Smith, or it would have been a breakaway layup. The basket doesn't count. The foul was out at midcourt. First, first it was Cadugan trying to cross over in front of him. This time it's Johnson Odom. And he just gets that hand in there. He's a terrific steals guy. He tries to cross over in front of a disruptive defender like Russ Smith. Can take it away from you every time. Do you think people understand how hard it is defensively? How hard you have to work to get the feet in the right position for those steals? I mean, it's a lot of work, drills, and everything else. Staying low. Yeah. We're going to see a guy from South Florida the next game that. You talk about playing low. You can't take it away from him. He plays so low. Right on cue. We just did the same thing. He walked. Good point. Well, apparently Marquette is going to try from start to finish to just keep dribbling through the defense. No, not going over the top. You're right. Louisville two minutes five seconds away from a victory. It'd be their tenth in the last 14 games. And again, typical of a Rick Pitino team. They typically play their best basketball. And February and March. It drops in for Jamil Wilson. It's you know, part of the problem. Look at Chang finding. They don't need it. Derek. Yeah, didn't need it, didn't as you said. It. Missed a short little floater. Mayo attacks the bucket. Back to back scores. Well, they're still down by double figures. Siva. Bumped down by Mayo. Wants the timeout, he gets it. Part of the reason they're not going over the top, Marquette is they got four guys back when they do bring it up, but Louisville handed them the game right now. Yeah, Louisville has a chance to get up 80 shots in this game. And one of the reasons they have done that, the primary reason, is because of the offensive class. Shot goes up in the corner, nobody even turns to box out Kyle Keurig. And he's able to get an offensive rebound. Offensive rebound from Gorgie Jang. Nobody's laying a body really on anyone. You can see Buzz Williams. He knows that the glass has been a major difference in this game. You know, it's not the size rebounds either. It's the hustle and 
beating guys to the spot. I know he's playing very small, Buzz, which is a distinct disadvantage. Well, rebounding is an issue for the top two teams in the Big East. Syracuse had difficulty on the glass, and Marquette's 12th in the Big East out of 16 teams in rebounding margin. They are out rebounded by a fraction per game. But they're also second best in the league in turnover margin. They're usually plus four turnovers per game. Not tonight. Johnson Odom fouled by Bahannon. Why would they want to try a backdoor look there? What's the point? They're trying to make it interesting. They've got full control of the game. Second foul on Bahannon. Both teams in the double bonus. Mentioned they're usually plus four in turnover margin per game. They're minus seven Marquette tonight. 25 turnovers to 18 for Louisville. Louisville is doing a really good job of extending this game. <laughs> Which is not their intention. Man, it bounces in and out for Wilson, who redshirted last year. Buzz Williams is a transfer from Oregon, where he played one season and started about half the year. He looks like he's limping around a little bit. Looks like he got a little thigh bruise. Or... Tough kid, though. They play real small. They don't need big guys right now, Louisville, other than Chang. Wilson will turn around. Smith was gone. They foul Curick, who's their best free throw shooter. Who had the foul. The clock running down. Tune in to Super Saturday on ESPN, a full day of hoops coverage. College game day will get started at noon. Covered by State Farm, then the ACC semifinals at 6, the Big 12 championship game, more game day, and then we'll be with you. 9 o'clock Eastern Time, Saturday night on Super Saturday on ESPN, the Big East Championship. Two semifinalists already determined. Syracuse will play Cincinnati. The first game here tomorrow night. Looking like it'll be Louisville against the winner of the game still to come tonight. University of South Florida against Notre Dame. Johnson Odom had it bounce off. Jang the rebound. Under a minute to go. Louisville the ball and a 12 point lead. And Jang will go to the line after the foul by Jamil Wilson. Pretty good foul, wow. really. Good for him on the line. And the Louisville fans realizing that victory is theirs. Now this is a really well played game by Louisville. They just were quicker to the ball. They didn't shoot it particularly well, but defensively sound. They played hard the whole game. That's what impresses me. Hard fought. And they just compete at both clubs, but just a little bitter handling pressure was Louisville. And they're going to beat Marquette in the Big East Championship quarterfinals for the second year in a row. Last year, a one sided Louisville win, 81 59. Mike Mara, remember that game at 22 points, six threes. Mara's missed almost all of this year for Louisville with knee trouble. What do you think of that double dot by uh, impact? You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> they need it. They need it. <laughs> In a hurry, Wilson dunk still down by 12. I think Rick Patino just told uh, Russ Smith you don't need it in a little bit of a different tone than you said it. <laughs> a little more aggressively. I think he's going to tell him right now. Do you know what the score is right now, Russ? <laughs> you know what the clock says? <laughs> well, when you're ahead, you're a little gentler, don't you think? Yes. A little softer approach. to win by 12 despite the fact they're actually right now outscoring Marquette by two points in the second half despite the fact that Louisville shot nine for 35 from the floor yeah, yeah, Sean, in the second half. I'm sorry Sean, Sean Richard Patino before the game said we're going to score 90. I said a dinner Whoa. on that. He felt they were going to get after it. Boy, they're going to be darn close. Siva comes out. Certainly if you had to vote for the 
player of this Big East championship so far. You can make a strong case for Seba. 18 points, career high, eight rebounds, six assists, four steals. He did have five turnovers. Did Russ Smith need that pass? No, but I'll tell you what. On the passes as well. JDO has had his hands full with him. The James been talking about putting the ball in front of that kid. You just don't get away with it. Hell ball. No basket for Crowder. Frustrating night. He did have a double double with 10 points and 12 rebounds, but really was not much of a factor despite the double double. Not his impact. I don't know, in West Virginia a couple of weeks ago. He had an impact on that game. Well, it's fun watching a couple of teams get after it and get up and down, isn't it? This sure is aggressive. Don't shoot it, Russ. It's <laughs> March and Louisville is surging for Rick Patino. Peyton Seba, the star. Marquette never led in the game. And the Golden Eagles will head to the NCAA tournament with a 25 and 7 record. So it's the first team that had a double bye to lose today. Marquette departs. Louisville will get the winner of the game still to come. Between Notre Dame, the number three seed, which will be the final team to see action at this Big East championship. They've been in town since Monday. They'll take on the University of South Florida. And Beth Bowen with the ongoing series of chats with Rick Patino. Thank you very much, Sean. Well, Rick, what impressed you the most about your team's effort tonight? What we wanted to do is really pick up, press the whole game. I just told him, I said, you know what, I was in the pros. You get tired when you have four games on the road in five nights. We're in the same city. We're not traveling. There's no fatigue, so we're going to go after them. I thought our fast break was terrific. I thought Jared Swapshire, under some tough conditions, played great basketball. Well, Swapshire and Bahannon had uh, combined 20 points, 20 rebounds. The depth obviously made a big difference for you today with Jang in foul trouble. Uh, how do you maintain this pace now? Well, you know, you've been around the game a long time. It, it, it's the other team you're playing. If you're playing against Notre Dame at home, they're going to hold it for 20 seconds. If you're playing against South Florida, it's going to be root canal. And you, can, you just got to stay patient and wait. You play against Marquette, Syracuse, Connecticut, you can run up and down. So the opponent sometimes dictates the score. Thank you very much, Rick. Well, Rick's still hot on the interview front as well. Peyton Siva with a gigantic night. And he, as you see, is with Beth. Thank you very much. You're going, <laughs> Peyton Siva. What made you guys so opportunistic tonight, even though you weren't shooting the ball terrific from the floor as a team? I mean, offense really isn't a big thing for us, especially now. You know, defense is really what we've been focused on, and defense is all that counts. Everybody really stepped up big tonight. I think Russ beat me in steals, but, uh, you know, everybody really played great and really stepped up down the stretch. How do you think your quickness uh, really made a, a difference tonight out there? I just try to, you know, fly around the court, and uh, coaches told me not to worry about anything, so you know, I just try to play. Usually I, you know, get got down on turnovers, but, you know, he just told me to continue to stick with it, uh, you know, just play through it, and, uh, you know, just try to get our team a victory. Thank you, Peyton. Sean? All right, Beth, thank you. And, yes, buddy Russ Smith did beat him in steals. He had five, and Peyton credited with four. So Louisville's a winner. 84-71 the final. Coming up next. College basketball live scoreboard followed by South Florida Notre Dame for Jay Bill and Beth Sean McDonough saying so long for just a few minutes from the garden and now back to Reese Hubert and Digger in the studio.